Today we're at the Heart Mountain National Antelope Refuge to catch some bighorn sheep. Primary purpose for the catch and the, and the marking of these animals is to monitor adult survival and to try and ensure herd recovery. Uh, we're in a place, or we have been in a place in recent years where uh, a very important sheep herd to the state of Oregon and to the history of sheep reintroductions in this state uh, declined precipitously and to a point where there was real concern about uh, the persistence of this herd. My name is John Muir. I'm the district wildlife biologist for ODFW here in Lake County. And so we began uh, in concert with the National Antelope Refuge to uh, initiate a federal EIS. This is an environmental impact statement document. Um, it was a three-year effort to get that through. And, and really the challenge there was to come up with uh, some tools to measure response to the management actions that we're taking. And what we agreed to there that I think is rather important is that we, is, we described three different demographic metrics in the sheep population that we could monitor and measure to determine the response to both cougar removal, habitat improvement, and water source improvement. Uh, and so going forward, we need these GPS collars to uh, both monitor adult survival as one of our demographic measures and to be able to better monitor the population growth. And here what we're doing, we're using a helicopter and, and net guns to capture single sheep. We're gonna, we're gonna catch three rams today and seven ewes. And uh, once the net is on that animal, um, we, we kick out a mugger, they get it out of the net, get it in a bag and bring it to us here at the table where we can take a number of samples, disease monitoring samples, just to ensure herd health uh, as well as put the GPS collar on it. And once those animals are released, they wander their way back to, to the herd ranges that they're originally from. The significance of, of the Heart Mountain Bighorn Herd is that it was the first successful reintroduction of California bighorn sheep back into Oregon after extirpation in the, in the late 19th century. This reintroduction occurred in 1954. We started with 20 California bighorns from Williams Lake, British Columbia. That herd was, was kept in a corral for a short period and released softly. And from there, those 20 sheep expanded to somewhere north of 450 sheep at the peak of the population. Um, during that time, uh, this herd was used as a source herd to reintroduce sheep into extirpated habitats all around the state. It truly is kind of the, the mother herd and the source population for, for most of the California bighorn sheep herds that exist today. So I've been working with bighorns now, professionally at least, uh, post-college post for about 15 years. Um, and in that time I've seen a number of herds increase, decline. There's certainly natural cycles and various reasons for that. What's unique in my experience and my professional experience with this mountain is that this, this bighorn sheep population is truly top-down limited. It is a predator limited system and that's honestly fairly rare. Uh, it's certainly the only place I've seen it in my career. Um, and so the good news is, is that because we were successful in accomplishing the EIS, we now have the management tools we need to address that. Um, we can't always do that in, in lots of states, but we, in this case, because it is predator limited, we can take action to try and help things. And, and you know, results at this point are very early. Certainly we don't have enough time into this to say that there's any kind of trend, but initial anecdotal observations are that it's working. You know, certainly predator management is controversial and difficult and there's always risk in that. It's something that we pay very, very close attention to. So there are challenges for coming forward that way, but I think really the biggest challenge in recovering this herd long-term is gonna be addressing the habitat issues and specifically juniper encroachment in bighorn habitat. Um, we've, we've seen an incredible amount of change in these habitats. It's affected water supply. It's, it's affected all forms of habitat, especially nutrition availability. Uh, they just don't have the forage availability that they did when they were performing well. And it's largely to do with juniper encroachment. Because it's bighorn habitat, as I'm sure everybody knows, it's rather steep and rather difficult to get to. And so just the practicalities and logistics of dealing with that juniper is going to be a real challenge. 